Hello everybody and welcome to part 7 of the Blender 2.80 Absolute Beginners course. Um, this part is going to be less entertaining, unfortunately, than the previous part. And we are going to talk about pivot points and transformation orientation. Well, that sounds interesting. I know, but this is pretty important that we learn those things. So... I will just jump into it by creating a few more beloved cubes and by focusing your attention on this little icon here. So when you click it, you can see we have multiple options he here and description says this is a pivot point. Well, what, what, what is it? And I will just show you by pressing the R key with all of the six cubes selected. So when I do it, you can see, oh, maybe let's just move them here. Uh, you can see the gizmo is located uh, some, somewhat in between the, the, whole, the, the all objects we have selected. If I duplicate them all here again, and if I select all the other objects, you could see the gizmo was moving right so it n right now if I press R you can see this handle is uh, the center point of this handle kind of goes to the middle of the gizmo object we have and this is the pivot point this is the point the rotation uh, scaling and basically any other transformation will have its center cen center point but it's the most uh, i think the the rotation visual uh, visualizes this the best so when i press r again we can see the whole transformation has its center ar somewhere around here where the gizmo is located but we can change this we can actually change the pivot point in uh, multiple ways. So let's say I will select individual origins. Now you can see the gizmo stays uh, as its place, but when I press R key, whoa, something different, right? And when I press R again, we have a free transformation happening. So this is actually, this becomes pretty useful. Uh, because let's say you have multiple objects in the scene, let's say trees, and you would like them to become smaller altogether. So when I press S, you can see all of the cubes get bigger or smaller at the same time. And this is because, and you can see those little dots everywhere here, these are the pivot points right now. So. <clears throat> if I select individual origins, the name is self-explanatory. The whole operations we select here, except of move, obviously, because, well, they all move um, by the value we defined uh, by transforming the gizmo. But all the transformation take place in the individual uh, object centers. So again, rotation and scaling. Everything goes individually. Uh, what if we select a 3D cursor? You can see the, the gizmo moved here right now. And when I use one of the scale handles, I'm pressing Ctrl Z just, just in case you wonder how, how to revert. When I, when I yeah, play with the handle, you can see the transformation uh, origin point is located here. When I, when I press R, you can see everything is rotating around the 3D cursor. Uh, one more option, which is pretty interesting, is the active element. So, why why is this cube an active element, you might ask. Let's switch to the wireframe mode. I press the Z key. And you can see 
all of the cubes are selected but this one seems to be selected even more because the orange color around it is a little bit brighter and this this indicates what an active element is so within the selection the last element you select will always be the active one so when i hold the shift key and i left click on any of the object uh, usually when you have a selection and you hold a shift key which is which stands for adding a selection uh, you would guess that this will deselect when i if i have a selection already and i click with a shift shift uh, with a shift key on any of the objects they they should deselect or be removed from the selection but in blender uh, it's not the case with holding a shift key and clicking on any of the object within the selection range will actually make it uh, an active object so let's say we have all those cubes i'm selecting this one and now when i press r this is the origin point this is the active element around which all of the transformations will take place right now so we can see that the scale goes into this point and when i rotate and let's say select this cube now everything uh rotates around this one this point so this is this is pretty useful uh again later when we're gonna do uh when we're gonna jump into the edit mode but i think you you i think you can already see especially with with the, with scaling and using the individual origins you can already see multiple uses of that if i if i had a forest and wanted my trees again to be to be smaller as i described it before this this is a great option of doing that um, yeah, and the final thing worth mentioning is you can access the pivot point by using a shortcut and this is a dot key on your keyboard, not on your numpad, uh, but on the regular keyboard, this is a dot key. So when you press it, um, you can choose um, multiple options here. So let's say a 3D cursor, you, s you can see the gizmo moves to that point. Um, you can choose, yeah, everything, everything you can see here. So another thing is the transformation orientation. Well, it sounds great, but why do I need that? And why is it important in my life? Well, I will show you why. And you probably had that question before. So let's say we take our beloved cube, we deform it a little bit. And now let's say we are somewhere in the middle of, of work and our cube is rotated like that. And you think, well, I would like it to be a bit longer. How do I do it with a scale tool when, when it's only scaling within the those three main directions? Do I have to somehow rotate it back again and 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 then use the tool and then go back to the previous position or how do i do that well that's why you need the transformation orientation for so you can access it here as a as a before the pivot points are here and the transformation orientation is here so again you have multiple options here and the one you should bother about is the normal and as soon as you click it you can see the gizmo uh, changed so when i go to the move option now it's more visible you can see the arrows actually for follow the shape orientation so now i can move it along its well along the position the object is in and it's same applies to the rotation. I can now rotate it like this, or I can go like that. And it doesn't matter how how I rotate the object. When I choose the scale tool, I can still follow the main orientation points of the object. 
So that's that's a very useful tool later, or even now actually when you when you wanna uh, just play around with Blender and you know put the stuff around and then still have a nice and uh, undestroyed unlimited access to 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 those kind of transformations. And by the way, if you need a quick access to the transformation orientation tools, uh, a shortcut for that is a comma key, uh, comma button, yeah, whatever. Um, when you press it, it's it's just next to the dot that we used for the pivot points. Um, so when you when you when you press it, you can actually very quickly switch between all of those options just here from the pine menu so again i would recommend playing around with those options uh, testing them for yourself and we see in the next video where i will explain the 3d cursor a bit more